Hey, it's Joe Glines from The Automator, and this video you're about to watch, you're going to see how Isaias, we were having a little internal The Automator call with, and Irfan hadn't used SQLite with V2, and he was pretty unfamiliar with SQL databases in the first place. So Isaias gave him a little tutorial on how to use it. I said, hey, why don't you record it? And that way, you know, we can share it with everybody. It's just a good learning lesson. Uh, I'm going to put a link up here for the webinar that Jean Lalon led several years ago and using SQLite with AutoHotKey V1. And then I'll also here put up a URL where you can grab Isaias's SQLite class for V2. Now it's not done, so it's not a finished class, but it has a lot of the bare bones stuff that you'd want to be using for doing, you know, selects and updates and upserts and whatnot. Yeah. So if you're using SQLite, uh, it's it's crazy powerful. Real quickly, one of the big lessons learned: um, if you're doing very small stuff in any file, storing data for in a, any file is great. XML is also great for very small stuff under, let's say, um, a thousand rows of data, you know, of records. Once you get beyond that, though, XML starts slowing down and SQL is crazy, crazy fast. Now, the other big thing to be aware of is if you're creating a tool that's going to be used by a lot of people, uh, you want to use MySQL instead of SQLite because SQLite doesn't have a built-in queue management stuff. So you need like to use MySQL, which puts things into like a cloud environment, which has a queue. So it's, it's a much bigger project. Um, that's something we also do. So if that's something you're looking for, we can implement that for you. But it's, uh, it's a, bit, <laughs> a bit more complex to do. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you enjoy the video, please like it. It really helps us out. We get a lot more views. We release videos twice a week. We're the largest auto hockey channel out there. We released videos Tuesdays and Thursdays and really helps us out. Have a great day. Cheers. Okay, so I think it's recording now. So. Oh, let, let me click. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we just have a fold uh, a database here an empty database that we created and we okay. just created two tables right and the tables just tell you what you want as the columns all right okay. and you can add data for each row that has those two columns so for this one uh, we created a settings table which is just going to contain all the information or settings or preferences of my program, right? Um, and usually the settings is a key value pair kind of thing, okay? It's just like true or false, or in this case, we're, we're gonna be saving the, and it's the same as in an INI file, you have key value pairs, right? Yes. So the key here is the increase and the value is up. The bad thing about any files is that you cannot have more information because you just have key values if you want more information in the value you have to kind of like split the things with a pipe or something do weird stuff yes. in a table you don't have that you just create more columns of what you want to keep track of but in this case we're going to start with key value pairs for these two and, I, and in the settings table we have two columns key and value and I just added two rows, increase and decrease, and the value for each of them, which looks very similar to the INI file, right? But okay. you see that the monitors here, we have key value pairs for those as well. But I want more information about the monitors. Well, I can say that the number here, one, two, that might be an ID. Monitor one is the ID of the one, two for the two. The deeming value, but what if I want the monitor name? the monitor size, for example. We can have all that. Yeah, we created that. another table, and this table has different columns. We have the ID, which is the number one, two, three, four, the name, which you're not saving that right now, um, the dim value, how much you want to dim it, but let's add more columns. Let's add the width, right? And this is an integer type. And we're gonna have the height as well. We want to keep track of that. Um, it's an integer type. So for each monitor, I want to keep track of these things. And, and X and Y. So oh, for example, the X and Y, yeah, definitely. X, integer, and Y, integer, right? Now, these two guys, let's move them down, right? And now when I save it, you will notice that if I go to the data, so one thing is the structure of the table, which means which columns you want and what they need to have in there. 
And for example, things like the ID, I usually make them primaries and unique and not null because I need to have at least the ID, right? Yeah. Um, and on the data, so so you have those are the things that you want to keep track of. But on the data for each monitor, then I add the information for them. Does that make sense? So for the monitor one, I have the name. I have what is the percentage of the dim value that I had the last time I selected it. The X and Y would be zero, zero. The width is going to be uh, 1920 by 1080, something like that. Um, and this one is two. And again, this one is actually on 19, uh, the, the X location is at 1920. And the height is going to be at zero, for example. Yeah. In my case, it's a little bit lower. It's like 300. It's a little bit lower to the right. And the width is going to be uh, 1080 by 1920 because I have this one kind of like flipped is portrait. So oh. this one is portrait. Right. So if you take a look at my screens, you will see display settings. One of them, I have it like portrait and the other one, I have it like horizontal. It's the same size, but one of them uh -huh. is down and the other one is, you know, so I want I want you to try the demo screen on this. That yeah, it doesn't work. It has a little bit of an issue. <laughs> Don't worry. Man, it it should work. I think it works, but it it covers a little bit. Ah, well, with the new modification, I don't know. I haven't tried that one, but we will see. But in any yeah. case, this is cool because now I can keep track of more information about a monitor that an any file doesn't give me, right? So now, but, but there's a question. We are sharing the script, and uh, if I add the database, I can read your monitors, and uh, because we are sharing. That's the, the reason. Screen. That's exactly the reason why you don't share the ini files. Yes. Because on your computer, it's going to be different than mine. So and, and that's the yeah. reason why why your script must create a default one with no values in it. No right. Values, yes. right. So in our case, we want to create a settings table and a monitor table. Of course, for the hotkeys, I want default hotkeys, but the monitor table must be empty. That I'm going to read from your computer and I'm going to save that information in my computer. And I think for each of them, when you run it the first time, I save the ID, the name, the X, Y, width and height. But the one thing that I'm going to be changing later is just the dim value. I'm not going to be changing those guys, you see? So this is kind of like a static thing. But the dim value is the only one that I'm going to be changing later on when I start working with it. But I just added these two rows as an example. But at the beginning, this is going to be empty, right? Our script needs to add these values into the uh, table later. So I'm going to teach you just two things for today so we don't take too much time. Okay. One of them is getting data out of the database, and the other one is inserting data into the database. Okay? okay. So they are very simple, very simple. So we already have the things. I added data in it so we can query the things up. And I'm going to be working with the monitors table because it has more columns, and that is going to help me show you something later. So let's say we open a new query. And this, this query here is what we pass with my, um, so say, for example, with prompt assistant, let me go to prompt assistant real quick. So you know where you're going to be using this. So in uh, prompt assistant or in any script that I have that is connecting to a database, you will find a lot of DB executables like this. And in those DB executables, that's where I do the select. You see this thing? Yes. So in the, exec in the exec section is where I'm gonna put my database query. That's what it's called, a database query. And that's what we're doing here. I'm just gonna show you what a query looked like and I think you have seen this before in WMI, for example. So yeah, the first uh, thing is, you, yeah, <laughs> you have seen that, right? I have seen. I don't understand that. Right, exactly. That's what we're going to go ahead and show. So the first one is to get data out of a table. So what I want is to get rows of data out of a table. To do that, you use the select command. And that tells you which columns you want. 
So remember that the table here has two, four, six, seven columns here. Okay. Okay. I could specify exactly which ones I want. So let's say that I want the width and height only. Okay. okay. At that point in my select, I say width, comma, height. So that's going to give me just those two columns. But I have to tell the command where I'm going to get it from. So I have to say from. Okay, this from. is to tell it from which table I'm going to do. Because remember, I have two tables right now, right? Yes. So I have to specify which one. It would be monitors, I think. Uh, yeah, there it is, monitors. And from monitors, if I just do this, it would give me all the rows, all the rows of, but only those two columns from those rows. So this okay. basically just gave me the information that I want. And I could can add we, other things. Yeah. Can we spe specify column numbers? I think, yes. Yeah, you can. So I think one comma three would give you the column one and the column three. But that is not advised, right? Now, now, let me see something. What is that number three there? I don't know what that is. Oh, no, you cannot do that. Hold on. Yeah, we cannot do that. I know that... No, you cannot do that. I know that I could choose one here. And that gives me the number. Well, it just gives me that. So, <laughs> I don't know. Okay. I know that I have done that. Okay. Hold on. So... But, but so that... Yeah, that gives me the maximum of that particular column number. So let me go back here. Oh, no, the ID would be two. So I have to check. I remember I remember seeing that you can put column numbers, but I definitely never use that unless it's that I have no other options. It's way better to always use the name of the columns yeah, be because better. the column location might change. So the height might be on the on the last column right now, but if it is on the first column, then your code is going to break. So yeah. you don't want that. It's better with the name. But notice that I got that. But say, for example, that I want the ID. I just add the ID and put a comma there, and now I have the ID number. What about if I want the name, right? So for all the columns, I have to mention all the names. <laughs> Not really, but what you have to do, and that's the one that probably you have seen a lot, is an asterisk there, like a star. Oh. That gets all the columns at once. Oh, um, that's hold on, let me see something. Oh, what? There it goes. So yes. it gives you all the columns all at once and all the rows because we're not filtering. That's the other thing. That's now we can really, go ahead and that's really, filter. That's really easy. <laughs> it is. It is so yeah, easy. It's uh, just like, uh, what do you want from this table? And that's it. I, I used it from the from other users using it and copy paste their code. I copy paste, I, right? Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know the concept, but now I get it. Right, how, and it's how, so how, simple. How about how about I select all the columns from the monitors and I want to use the filter. Right. So now we're gonna filter. For example, I just want okay. all the monitors that are of width nineteen twenty. Now in this table, like. There's not much data to filter on, but it doesn't matter. I can do this. Let's say I just want the information from the first monitor. Well, you have a command called or a statement called where. The yeah. where, it tells you what condition is true. And the condition that I want right now, you put the name of the column that you want to match, the equal sign, and what you want to match from it. Now, this is where you have to make be careful. If the column is a uh, is of type string, remember that all of these are integers, right? Yeah. But if the column is of type string, you have to use quotation marks. Like for example, quotation. if the column is name equals, you cannot put AOC here to that any set. Zero. That's not going to work. That's going to give you an that, error. That, that makes sense. Right. Now, what you have to do is put the quotation marks, and now. You have to be careful because this is case sensitive, I think. Case sensitive, yes. I think you can do that. Yeah, it is case sensitive. Yes. I think there are ways to 
use case uh, and sensitive yes i think you can i i have i have seen that uh, somewhere right but in general i definitely as that's you're creating your own program just use the case that you create and that's yes. it I, but it's really it's really easy i think you can use really? the like command how, here how, how, here's the equal sign but if you use the like command so where name like something i think that uh let me see hold on. Yeah. We're name. Oh, okay. I thought that it would do. I will check on the like. Oh, there it is. Here it is. Like. Now, it's if I do this, AOC does that. Yeah, you see, when you use the like, instead of using the equals, you use the like statement, it is case insensitive. Uh, uh, I have a question. Uh, yeah we can uh, store huge data in databases yep. and uh, this filtering how much time it would take to filter the thousands of lines nothing like not at all like let, let me let me show you i i think we have a database here let me add a database you're gonna like this one um this one was I think we have it on uh, AJ's. There is this big, hold on. Let me do something real quick. I can open up a, oh. Uh, maybe I don't have it there. Let me see. Hold on. I think this guy here, I, I will not be able to sync it though, but let me show you what it was because there is one of them. Let me see. Hold on. Yeah, there's a seven gigabyte database file that we have. Oh, I got that. Uh Sure. That huge database. That's, um, that's really huge database. It, it it has millions of rows. But let me get a different database. Let me see if I have um let me let me share, let me do this. In uh here. Oh, I have one that we can probably use. I think I know I know what, what to use. Let me we have another one that I think I do have on my end. Um, By the way, uh, my here. battery is 12%. Oh, okay. Don't worry. We're going to finish on that one. Yes. But this one is this one is another database that has a lot of data in it. Uh, again, let me show you this. This one has 87,000 rows and this one has 12,000. So, and, and birds, this one should be the biggest one. No, 32,000 rows. So, for this one, if I do a query on that, so let's just go ahead and create a query here. Um, create a query, select, let me see what I want. Uh, BI, so let's get the, Count. So let's get the count. So I say select. Uh, let me change this to races. Count. I think I put it CNT from uh, birds. Bird. Yes. Where BID 156. Let me just copy this. Uh, where BID equals that. How there about less than and greater than? Look at that. It just blinked. In less than 0 0.001 second, it returned the data, even though it has 87,000 rows. So in less than oh. less than a second. So it, it that's the reason why we use databases, and one of the reasons, right? Um, that they are really optimized. 
and you can make any query and 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 I can get anything from this like just just do that and I get everything in in less than a second look that was just three seconds uh, 0 0.003 seconds so it's amazingly fast you don't have to worry it doesn't matter how big the database is does that make sense now let's go back to what I was saying yeah. um let me just go back here now you know that you can select the tables uh, so the the columns here from the table and here is your filtering okay so in the settings table i say select everything from monitors where id equals one and that will give me the data for the first monitor so that's what i want to do let me see where where is it oh because Ah, you have to be careful with that. If you have something selected, you, you have to select the table. No, I just have to. No, I just have to um, click. If you have something selected, it's just gonna try to run whatever you have selected. So I just deselect everything and look at that. It just gives me the whole information about okay. that one monitor. But sometimes I just want the dim value. That's what what we're gonna be working with most of the time. So I'm just gonna get the dim value of that. You see, that's so easy, isn't it? You can create and statements yes. or or statements as you would do in any other language, and you can put um, parentheses on those. So or ID equals two, for example. You see, and that gives me both values. It's going. All right. It's it's cool. It's very easy. <laughs> it's now very easy. This. Now the second one that I wanted to teach you was the insert. And, uh, my your battery is done yeah it's it's uh 10 percent all right okay um well then let's keep it there I, I just wanted to show you how simple it is to do this stuff like <clears throat> later on we're going to see the insert command and that what it does is that adds a new row and it is it is easy to just say insert oh if you don't know how to do the things you can right click on one of the tables and you can generate an insert query and it goes ahead and creates a little example of what you can do um okay so all of that we can mod yeah we can mod all modify for modification we use we need to use select no okay. for modification is different but don't worry in any case all of this can be in one line like this because all the commands okay. finish with the semicolon but okay. you can have it in different um in different lines like this and it it works just fine because it knows what the okay. semicolon is right so <clears throat> it's just insert into the name of the name of the, of the table. table which columns you want to affect you don't have to put them all you can just put the id if you want or just put but remember there are some columns that are required so in my case i made the money the id when you look at it the id cannot be empty so if you try to fill out everything else and yes. don't give me an id it's gonna actually uh give you an error but um if it doesn't have that constraint you can just fill the whatever column you want i just want to select the dim value only for example so in any case it's just divided in two sections which columns you want to modify then the word values and then you put the values that you want to modify that's it and later on and the data that you want to put there so in here it's going to be yeah it's going to be the number three the name is going to be aoc 10 the dim value is going to be a number uh 50 percent the x and y is going to be zero zero and then this one is for 80 720 and when i do that what is going to happen is that oh hold on let me see did i was, select correctly the line yeah so when we go here let me see if it inserted it there it is yeah that's it, it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's for inserting one. Um and, we do and have for, and for modification. For modification, you have update and delete. Those are the four uh, main things that you're gonna be doing. The update command is a little bit different, and the delete one is also a little bit tricky, but we're gonna see those later. Just select and insert. 
If you want, later on, you take a time, download SQLite Studio, create a new database, just create one, and start playing with it and just try yeah, to I'm, figure I'm out. Going to experiment with it. Yeah. Right, because it's really simple. After you get that, it's, it's so cool to create a program with this because you can do the queries in one line that give you exactly the data that you need in the format that you need. That's the other thing. So yeah, it's going to be cool. Um, so I'm going to stop it at there. Um, I think so. we did Thank a lot so today. Much. Yeah, it's yes. going to be cool. <laughs> I hope yes. you you practice a little <laughs> bit with that because I, most of the times we're going to be using databases. I enjoy learning with you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. There you go. Okay, man. So we're going to be talking later. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.